your girl Becky and I am currently down with COVID so we are doing a chill painting session here now at home. This is um, Arches hot press that I've taped up to my cup easel. I've got my water cup, I've got a palette. I opted for this one so I don't need to take out the glass palette out to clean and I'm also going to be using my gouache palette that holds all of my colors in this airtight container. I don't think I'm going to use all of them. I'm likely going to pick one red alizarin crimson, uh, one blue cerulean blue, and my yellow ochre because my subject today, uh, here's a little bit of a photo that I took when I was still out and not confined to quarantine. I kind of want to paint the scene today, so I think I can make it work with just three or maybe four colors and uh, white, of course. I also have a few brushes. There is a big three quarter inch, sorry, three quarter, yeah, three quarter inch rosemary brush. I have these two from Etcher. This is a half flat and this is a number six round. And we're gonna start painting. I start by toning the page with really diluted yellow ochre and then trying to carve out the big shapes and especially the shadows because I want to let this underpainting show as the bright of the streets. I then proceed to block in all the main shapes using the big colors that I can see. So a dark purple for the shadowy parts of the buildings, of the street, a little bit more grayish maroon for the sidewalk, blue for the sky, and I also try to carve in bits of the fence and some of the foliage on the side. Since I am using yellow ochre as my yellow, I can't get really strong greens and I did contemplate if I should bring out my other yellows and also other blues, especially since I do have them on my palette at my disposal, but I decided I want to maintain a color harmony and I can always shift the value a little bit with my color uh, choices. I did end up having to reach to Prussian blue in order to darken my values because at this point with just yellow ochre, alizarin crimson, and cerulean blue, it's a bit hard to get anything that's dark in value. I'm slowly starting to etch in details with my smaller round brush and shifting away from my big flat brush and I'm making sure to differentiate the marks that I'm making on the streets depending on whether or not they're in light and shadow. Um, I did trip up a little bit because some of the areas were still wet and as a result I have to make sure that I give them a slightly darker feel so that they're not the exact same shade as the marks that are in the light.
I wanted somewhat of a bluer sky so I did go over them once more and I added a lot more white to it. And I also added some clouds because I just wanted the back to have a little bit more movement. And not too much contrast either since the sky is already pretty white so I just came in with pure white on a damp sky for it to blend together. Now I'm done with my first painting which I'm actually quite happy about but then I kind of decided that I want to give another painting a go. So I looked in my phone gallery for another picture and just decided we're going to sketch another one. The picture was taken essentially at the same time of the day. Uh, just seconds apart because I was waiting for a red taxi to come through. I initially planned to maybe get some snapshots of the taxi and or maybe other iconic Hong Kong vehicles, just the bus. Uh, either half in light and half in shadow or one in light and one in shadow. So this is the one that I end up going for. I started with the same tone yellow ochre because I wanted the two paintings to have really similar feel and I'm actually quite happy with how it turned out. I am still not sure if this is the exact hue I want for the streets but we're going to go with it and we're going to build color relationships with it. The contrast in the first painting I know is really strong. I still am not sure if that is the best course of action but that is the decision that I've taken into this painting as well. Hong Kong taxi red is always a tricky bit because the red is strong but not too strong. It does shift towards of a yellow hue as opposed to it being pure red. So I did have to dip in into carmine I believe or vermilion red in order to get this color but I also make sure that this doesn't appear anywhere else in the background so hopefully the taxi does pop out a little bit. I still struggle with trying to get the right proportions, uh, not just because I'm not drawing straight pen on paper, but also because the angle of the easel is still something that I'm getting used to. So holding the brush from a slight distance or even coming in closer but vertically is not something that I've mastered just yet. So the angle's a bit wonky but it's a good learning experience or at least I take it as a learning experience that I can have a series of wonky taxis and maybe one day I'll have a perspectively accurate taxi which works too. the exact same scene just 10-20 minutes before makes it a lot easier for me to emulate the same colors and the same values because I saw that it worked in the first scene and I just basically copied the strategy. I try to not fill in too much of the trees and try to leave a little bit of the sky showing through as well even though I know I can always poke holes in it afterwards in order to get that sky shining through. And then I decided I wanted a little bit of a darker shadow because that's what I see in the photo. So I added again more of the Prussian blue. So that essentially is what I'm using as my quote unquote darkener slash black to bring any mixes down in value. And here I'm doing the same technique with my 
marks that I see on the street, like the signs, trying to put it in a different shade when the streets are in light and also in shadows. Try to paint some Chinese characters as well. Not my forte, but I do try to allude to them by copying as much strokes as I can. And now I'm just trying to add in the details because I already have the big shapes in and now I can just have fun with anything that's in the background. And the great thing about background details is I can keep it loose. So if in the focus of the picture, so for example, the taxi and then next is the bus, um, the degree of details is I try to make it as accurate as possible for the taxi. I can make it a little bit more loose for the bus but I can be very loose in the background and that's not gonna matter because it's the background and it's not where the eyes are supposed to focus to when we're looking at this painting. That's pretty much it for this home sketching session. Thanks so much again for coming and watching this video. If you like this kind of content, please give it a thumbs up. And I would love to hear what you think in the comments down below. If you would like to see more videos like this, I've done a bunch of them, mostly outdoors, actually all of them outdoors. And hit subscribe to that button down below. See you guys!